Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and uh, today I want to talk to you about some brand new Shenmue news, as well as a new piece of Shenmue merchandise. Now, I'm going to talk about the news first, so if you just want to see this merchandise, please skip to this time code, and I'll show you all. I'll show you the whole thing then and there. We'll talk about it at that point. But otherwise, stick around. We're going to talk about the news. Okay, news. All right. So the news, of course, that a lot of people, of course, have been messaging me about and everything is that. Uh, uh, sh the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter campaign, which was successful to a certain extent, which we'll talk about in a moment, has now basically added what is called the Slacker Backer Campaign, which essentially means they're launching another one, sort of, which I'll explain, uh, to uh, basically allow for people to pay through PayPal, which was an option that was missing in the original one. So let's talk more about that. If you're not familiar, Shenmue is, of course, a uh, video game franchise, my favorite of all time. And after 2001, when the second game came out, the series basically died. Okay, it went away for 14 years. And then at E3 2015, it punched its way out of the grave and came back. However, it came back in kind of an unconventional method. It, um, the third game was announced, but they said, like, look, we're going to fan fund this because there's really no other way to do this. Contrary to a lot of really bad reporting, Sony is not funding the game. They never were. They, it was never really an option. But they were cool enough to put up money for advertisements uh, and um, marketing and publication, just not development. All of the development funds would come from Kickstarter funding. Basically us giving our money to make the game's development happen. However, you don't just pay the money and then it goes away. You don't ever get anything for it. You're essentially also buying the game or buying a bunch of other little merchandise and items, etc., as well as contributing to the overall project which was kind of nice, conceptually. Uh, so they, they basically had a, they had a $2 million goal, which they said would give you the most basic thing that they would be able to call Shenmue 3. Uh, and they smashed that in only nine hours, which was really impressive. However, like all Kickstarters, they had what are called stretch goals. Now, a stretch goal could be anything, depending on the Kickstarter, but in this case, it was basically more features in the game to get it closer to what Yu Suzuki really envisions Shenmue 3 to be. Uh, some goals are, you know, are easier ones like subtitles, like they added a bunch of different foreign language subtitles, or just not just English and Japanese, but, you know, uh, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, etc. There, there was a bunch of them. Uh, but there's also, you know, like, uh, they would improve the fighting mechanic system, uh, they would expand the physical levels, they would add new uh, gameplay mechanics, basically. All these things that he wants to do, but then it, by doing the, uh, you know, uh, stretch goals, they would actually have the funding to pay programmers and developers and all that to actually make it happen. Now, doing so, they reached $6.3 million, which was great. And uh, it meant that we were going to get a, a, a pretty good game. But... Yu Suzuki was very clear about the fact that only a few days into the Kickstarter, he was like, honestly, the ideal budget for this game would be $10 million, which did not happen, as I'm sure, obviously, you guys know, since it only reached $6.3 million. Now, one of the big things that was missing from that Kickstarter was the ability to pay through PayPal. Because when you use Kickstarter, at least through that specific Kickstarter, you were limited to just your credit card. Now, a lot of people, and I know this firsthand, wanted to pay with PayPal. And I know there's a lot of, lot of bad reporting out there and a lot of, shall we say, misinformed opinion pieces uh, where people are saying, like, this is super greedy, how dare they, you know, they just got all this money and now they're demanding more for no real reason, blah, 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 blah. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit, shall we? Like I said, he was very transparent from right at the beginning that the ideal budget would be $10 million. And like I said, I can tell you from personal experience, there was a shit ton of people who wanted to pay through PayPal some because of that's a personal preference, they didn't feel comfortable putting their credit card out there, or maybe they literally couldn't for whatever reason. But some other cases that people aren't taking into consideration is there were whole countries where they can't contribute because their specific credit cards are not accepted through Kickstarter. They now have that option. Or some people simply missed it. Okay, I, I know there were a lot of people who said, fuck, I missed it. Because they, I got tons of messages about this because people seemed to think I was working for the Kickstarter, which I am not. But if you were someone who missed the Kickstarter, or you couldn't pay without PayPal, or you lived in a country where you know uh, your credit card or whatever was not accepted, you now have the chance to contribute to Shenmue 3, which is amazing. And it's awesome for a couple of different reasons. 
See, like I said before, when you give your money, you're not just giving them money and you get nothing back. You get specific rewards depending on how much you want to contribute. You can contribute a dollar and they'll just say thank you very much. You can contribute, there's an $8,000 reward tier. I mean, like you can do anything in between. Now, there's, like I said, there's reward tiers. So when you hit certain tier points, you get all sorts of different perks. Now, all those things are listed on the website. I'll include that link in the description. Uh, for example, you can pay 60 bucks and you can get the physical PS4 version, which as far as we know might actually be the only way to get the physical PS4. That is not confirmed. It's just something that we were kind of hinted to believe might be the case. Um, so yeah, you can contribute whatever you want. And basically what I'm saying is you can get all the original tiers if you want to, if you missed out. So that's awesome. But what makes it even more special is that the money you put into this is basically just thrown into the pot with all the original 6.3 million. So by putting money in, you get us closer and closer and closer to those other stretch goals that we did not reach. And therefore, unlock more content in the game, not only to make the game better for you, but to make the, better, the game better for me and for everyone else who is going to play it now and forever. Throughout the end of time, the game will be better because you contributed to it. So that's amazing, and it's awesome that they did that. And there's, there's one other fucking stupid ass rumor about this that needs to die because a lot of people are saying again they're so greedy how dare they demand to do this blah, 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 blah. people don't seem to understand that people we asked them for this we demanded over and over again at least we in the Shamu community demanded over and over again please give us PayPal as an option please give it to us that wasn't their idea it was ours they are giving us what we want and they're giving us, about the time you see this video, I think there's about 100 days left you can contribute. This is not an ongoing thing. It's for 100 days, and at the end of it, that's it. That's their budget, lock, stock, and barrel forever. On the subject of Kickstarters, and this is not related to Shenmue, but I'm going to uh, talk about this real quick. There's another one I want you guys to check out if you're into the Dreamcast, which you might kind of be if you're watching this video, because, of course, Shenmue is a big Dreamcast classic. Um... It's called Saber Rider. I've personally contributed to it because I think it's a, a worthwhile, cool-looking game. They're asking for like seventy-five thousand at the time I make this. I think they're at around forty, so they may or may not make their goal. I hope that they do because I'm always for a brand new Dreamcast game. So if you have any interest, again, link in the description. You can click on it, see if it's something worthwhile to you. But you can get it for the Dreamcast as well as other uh, platforms. I think uh, it's going to be for Android and a few other things. They want to get it on the Xbox One, the PS4, the Wii U, etc. But uh, the Dreamcast version definitely happens if they hit their minimum goal. So I just thought I'd put that out there for any other Dreamcast super fans who don't already know about this project. Or even casual fans who are like, you know what, that game looks worthwhile. I think I'm going to support that. Links in the description. But now, on to this. The, uh, the new piece of Shenmue merchandise. Let's go ahead and open it up, shall we? Uh, so I'll just cut through the side here. This package uh, comes from the, uh, the UK from a uh, company called uh, Data Discs. Now, I actually talked about this a while back when I first announced it. Funny thing about this piece of merchandise is it was the last piece of Shenmue merchandise to be both announced and sold before Shenmue 3 was announced, which means it's, from, it's a relic from another time where when we had nothing to do for 14 years, all we had to look forward to was new merchandise. This is the last one of that era. So let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. Cool box here. If I can get past this part, screw it. We'll screw it open here. Uh, Wow, they package it really well, which is what you want. You don't want it to not be packaged well. Ah, here we go. Now the first one up, this is not Shenmue related, it's just something really, really cool. This is a vinyl record. That's what they are. Forgive me, I'm not a super I'm not super into music, I'm not super into sound. I know they're sometimes referred to as LPs, vinyl records. I know some other people said they were referred to as something else, but yes, here we go. This is the first one up. This is just a cool thing I wanted to pick up as part of the, the deal. A Streets of Rage, uh, original soundtrack to the classic Sega game. But, of course, the other ones are Shenmue. Now, they uh, look like this. Okay, there's the front. Again, front, front. Now, it looks like I bought three copies of the same one. I did not. This is a, a legitimate criticism I have, and I think a lot of other people do too, was this is actually three different versions. One of them is the limited edition, and the other two are regular edition, but like the actual record itself looks different. However, from what I understand, they really didn't denote that anywhere on the packaging. And that's weak sauce, to be honest with you. Um, I really wish they had done that because a lot of collectors, of course, want to keep them sealed. I don't even own a record player, um, so I don't have much motivation to open them. I'm a collector too. But for the sake of you guys, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take a hit for the team. I'm going to show you guys how cool these things actually look. It also includes this little 
pouch thing, which has some uh, cards in it for Streets of Rage, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll, you know, so that's that's really really cool that they included those. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, these records, the uh, the Shenmue ones. Now again, I have no idea which is which yet, so we're gonna find that out. Uh, opening up the first one here. This is, and I know I probably should have worn like gloves or something so that I don't you know ruin the record as much. But let's see here. Uh, it doesn't come out this way. Can you tell I don't handle vinyl very often? Uh, this one is, let's see here. I'll do it this way. This one is blue. It's just straight up blue, okay? There you go, blue. Uh, let me put that back in real quick here. I, it's been so long since I, I, I thought about these, they just kind of showed up, so I kind of forgot. You know what, what all the details are with them. I do know that, uh, see here, again, I'm not really into sound and stuff, but I do know that what they did this properly from everybody who said this. Uh, like, they didn't just go and take an MP3 and, like, you know, shove it onto wax, basically. They went into the original Sega Master, like, audio, and uh, they did it the way you should do it. I know that's a bad description, but it's from a guy who doesn't really know anything about how you do that in the first place. Ah, this is the limited edition one. You can tell because it comes with this little poster inside of uh, basically the front artwork here. Uh, and then let me get it. It comes out this way. This one is black. Or I assume maybe this is the limited edition because it has that. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's black. There you go. And I'll put that back inside here real quick and maybe the last one is the limited edition i don't know we'll find out uh so that's supposed to obviously be like the classic look to it let me see real quick if this one had a poster and i just missed it yes it does this one has a poster as well my mistake so by process of elimination i guess this would have to be the limited edition one and i honestly don't even remember what the limited edition one came with i think it was just supposed to like look different a little bit here we go it has same poster and then it has the record. Yeah, and the record is, you know, it, it just has like this weird look to it like that, which is pretty cool. Is, yeah. So there you go. You have one black one, uh, one blue one, and one like mixed blue weird one. So yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, I thought that was pretty neat. I uh, I hope you guys thought it was neat. Um, but yeah, well, I guess I could show you if you want. I'll just open up the uh, Streets of Rage one here real quick. Um, I'm not really sure why the Streets of Rage one came with like cards, but the Shenmue one didn't. Um, I would have told them, you know, make some Shenmue stuff. I mean, come on, man. Shenmue, you know, Shenmue fans, like we're really into physical merch. You know, we'd totally back that. But uh, inside. It has this really cool Streets of Rage art. It has a couple of them, actually. That's really cool. And uh, the actual record here. I only got one of these. They had three different styles, but I just wanted one because I'm, I'm not a Streets of Rage super, super fan. That is cool. That is fucking badass looking. Look at that. That's awesome. It makes me just kind of pissed I don't own a record player. Um, maybe I'll get one eventually. I just, I don't, like, I really don't own much vinyl records, so it's kind of, seems like it would almost be pointless, but uh, there you go, guys. Uh, so that's it on the actual record. I thought you guys would like that. Uh, again, you know, check out Saber Rider. It uh, just looks like it's a cool project. And of course, the Shenmue uh, PayPal option, it's there. Go contribute if you're at all interested. If you're not, that's fine. You know, I don't take issue with anyone who's not interested in the game or interested in contributing to it. But if you didn't know about it and you and you do want to contribute to it now, you have the option. So please consider it. Uh, again, all these links will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.